Hello and welcome to my presentation on teacher confidence in implementing the science of reading. My name is Lindsay Kemeny and I am excited to talk to you today about my action research study. A few years ago, several different things happened the same year that led me to what's known as the science of reading. The first thing is that it was my first year teaching kindergarten and I had previously taught second grade. We spend so much time in kindergarten teaching the students the sounds of the alphabet. And so I was so excited to bring my students back to my small group table and tell them, now I'm going to show you how we can read words. And I would give them the books that were provided to me um, from my school through our big box curriculum. And suddenly I realized that these books could not be read um, by using the things I had taught them. These books were not decodable and relied on um, repetitive text and picture clues in order for students to read the words. So suddenly I found myself having to tell my students, oh wait, uh, no stop, this one you can't sound out. Um, this one you have to look at the picture and make a guess. And that felt so wrong to me even though I had taught those strategies when I taught second grade and hadn't really thought about them. But now I could see that when I was teaching students things like look at the first letter and look at the picture and guess and get your mouth ready, all these things were guessing strategies and weren't really teaching them to read. And so I began to get a little uneasy about the way I had been, been taught to teach reading. Then that same year, my son, who was in second grade at the time, was diagnosed with severe dyslexia. And um, I was shocked and I began to research all I could about um, dyslexia and what dyslexics need to learn and then about reading in general and about the brain and what the brain does when we learn. And all of this brought me to this knowledge which is now called the science of reading. This term, the science of reading, has almost become a buzzword lately. And there is a lot of confusion over the term and sometimes people think it refers to a specific curriculum or program or method, but it doesn't. It refers to a large body of research on reading and it encompasses literally thousands of studies. I love this quote by Dr. Louisa Motes, who explains what the body of work known as the science of reading is not, as well as what it is. And she states that it's the emerging consensus from many related disciplines based on literally thousands of studies supported by hundreds of millions of research dollars conducted across the world in many languages. The more I learned about reading research, the more angry I became. Why wasn't I taught these things in college? Why wasn't I offered professional development courses on this topic? And not only was I not taught the right way and the research behind reading, but I was taught the wrong way to teach reading and incorrect theories that have been debunked by science. When I shared the things I learned in a presentation to the faculty at my school a couple years ago, I found that I was not alone. One teacher came up to me afterwards crying and exclaimed like, why wasn't I taught these things? And she was just lamenting over the fact that she could have helped so many students throughout her career if she had been taught the science of reading. Another colleague in my district um, contacted me right after she graduated from college. She had just been assigned to teach first grade and she called me in a panic exclaiming, I don't know anything about phonemic awareness or blending, help. Emily Hamford is a reporter for APM Reports and she has brought national attention to this problem. And um, she's pointing out the devastating effects. And she says that many educators do not know the science and as a result, millions of kids are being set up to fail. And many students are failing. The National Assessment of Academic Progress shows that two thirds of fourth and eighth graders are reading below proficient and one third are below basic. There can be um, many different possible causes of this, but many ed educational critics have argued that poor classroom instruction has been particularly responsible. And there's research from Cunningham, I will reference at the end, um, and they have shown that many teachers lack the basic knowledge needed to teach reading acquisition. 
I wanted to offer a possible solution to this problem, and my proposed solution is to provide a professional development series about the science of reading. And my action research study focused on this question. How does a professional development series about the science of reading impact teachers' confidence in teaching reading as measured by pre and post surveys? This is an overview of the instructional unit that I created. It was a six hour unit and it consisted of about seven self-paced modules. I had a module for each of the major components of reading and I had so much information on phonemic awareness that I broke that into two and then I also added uh, an introduction to the science of reading. All of these modules were housed in Nearpod, which allowed um, the teachers to have a little bit more of an interactive experience. And I went through the major research findings of each area and then shared the classroom implications for each. I used an action research approach for this study and I collected quantitative data. So my data collection instrument was this four point Likert scale survey that you see on the screen. I used the same survey for both the pre and post assessments and I administered them electronically. The first five questions focus on the participants confidence in their teaching ability of each of the main components of reading and the second um, the second half the question six through ten focused on their confidence in their understanding um, of each of the five components of reading. In order to quantify the results, I assigned a specific value from one to four to each of the results, so um, or each of the responses. So you can see the first five, a minimal would have scored one, up to an expert would have scored a four, and on the second half, the not at all confident would have scored a one, up to the very confident would have scored a four. Then I calculated the mean, I calculated the um, overall mean for all the questions and compared it from the change from pre and post survey and I also compared um, the mean from each question individually. When I initially um, set out to get volunteers for my study I reached out to my social circles online and was just overwhelmed with the response. Um, within an hour I had a hundred teachers and by the end of the day I had 500 teachers who had expressed interest who had signed my consent form and I had to close off, close it off and then um, I got about 50 more people on a waiting list. So I think this just to me seemed to confirm the problem that many of these teachers realize they are missing this critical information about reading acquisition and they just have a strong desire to learn and improve their literacy instruction and I just it just made me admire teachers even more that they could see that you know they're struggling to teach reading and they want to do something about it ultimately I just used 124 teachers um, for my study because they were able to complete all the modules and the pre and post survey within my two-week time frame these are the overall results of my study. So the mean on the pre-survey was 23.47 out of a total possibility of 40 points. And on the post-survey, the mean was 33.35 out of a possible 40 points. So this is an increase of 42.1%. This graph shows the mean scores on each individual question from items one through five. Um, it shows the the, both the pre-survey and the post-survey mean scores. And if you remember, the first five questions focused on teachers um, rating their confidence and their ability to teach each of these five different areas. So you can see that there was growth in each one. And here are the mean scores for the second set of questions. This set of questions focused on teachers' confidence in their understanding of each of the um, five main components of teaching reading. There was also growth in each of these areas. The purpose of my action research study was to determine how a professional development series about the science of reading impacted teachers confidence in teaching reading and the mean score change was an increase of 42 percent um, 
42.1% to be exact from the pre-survey to the post-survey. So this, based upon this data analysis, the professional development series was shown to have an overall positive effect on teachers' confidence levels. And it demonstrated an effective way to improve teacher confidence in teaching reading. Some of the strengths of my study include a very focused research question and a well-designed instructional unit. I have been studying the science reading for the past three to four years and been applying everything I know in the classroom. So this helped me as I designed the unit and I was able to share ideas of how to implement um, these research findings in the classroom. Additionally, um, the timeliness of the study is another strength uh, because there's an increased national attention on the science of reading right now and many states are adopting policies mandating programs based on the science of reading. Um, also, um, I had a good sample size of 124 participants. A weakness of my study is that the data collection instrument relied on participants self reports of their confidence and their um, levels of understanding of reading practices. So it has been documented that teacher self evaluations are not always reliable. Additionally, this study did not measure the impact on student learning. So we don't know if an increase in teacher confidence will translate to an increased reading proficiency in students. One possible influential factor is the current political climate um, in regards to the science of reading right now. Um, it has the term science of reading has become really relevant right now and has become a buzzword um, and many states are beginning to adopt policies and trainings based on the science of reading. Um, additionally, another factor that may have positively skewed the results is that the participants who volunteered already had an interest in the science of reading. So they already have the self-interest and motivation and they already recognize that they need to learn more and they have a desire and they want to learn more about the science of reading. And a final influential factor is that um, due to COVID-19, a lot of teachers are more comfortable with online learning. And this may have contributed to the fact that teachers were more willing to participate in a fully online asynchronous professional development. I think we would all agree that we want to see our students' reading proficiency levels increase. We want our students to be reading and to become successful readers. And so I strongly recommend further investigation into how these teacher confidence levels impact students' reading proficiency. Additionally, I'd also recommend a research study that evaluates the pre and post surveys on teachers' levels of knowledge regarding the science of reading instead of just their confidence levels. And then once again, how those knowledge levels impact student reading proficiency, because I think that's our whole goal is that we want to create um, a nation of strong readers. I have become so passionate about the science of reading over the last few years, so it was such a pleasure to complete this action research study. And because of the positive results um, and the positive impact um, my modules had on teachers, I'm excited to continue to offer them in hopes to alleviate the problem of teachers struggling to teach reading. Thank you so much for attending and listening to my presentation.